This is the only Orca Slicer tutorial that you're going to need. Today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Orca Slicer for beginners. I'm going to make this as simple as possible, so let's get started. Step number one, what you want to do is go to orcaslicer.com and download and install the software. It'll walk you through on how to do all of this. Then once you have the app or software installed, this is what the app will look like on your computer right here. So double click on that and open it. That's step number two. We need to open Orca Slicer. This is what the dashboard looks like. It's a lot like Bamboo Studio. It's very similar. So step number three, what we want to do is click on a new project, open a new project. And this is what the slicer looks like on the inside here. And I know that this looks like a lot, but guys, I promise I'm going to walk you through all of this. It's going to be extremely easy. So at the top up here, we have a series of tabs. And what we're going to do here as we get through the process of getting closer to 3D printing our models, we're going to move closer to the right here, right? We start with the prepare tab up here on the left. Then we go to the preview tab, then the device tab, and then from there. So what we first need to do is we need to figure out a model to 3D print. And maybe you already have one or you don't, but what a lot of people use is very popular websites known as makerworld.com. We have printables. There's probably like a dozen super popular websites like this. What we need to do here is we need to download the model file that we want, right? So we're on makerworld.com. This is one of the most popular ones. On all of these websites here, what you're going to find here is a download link. See right here where it says download 3MF, that is the model file. So I'm gonna click download. And you can see up here in the right hand corner, it just downloaded in my downloads folder. So then we're gonna go back to Orca here. And what we wanna do here is we wanna click on this plus button right here. This is how we add models or files to the software. So click on that and then double click on which one you want to open and it should load in here. So this is what the model looks like. And a lot of times what you can do is you can use the mouse scroller to zoom in and out. You can also left click and drop and drag to twist it and move it to see different views. You can also right click and hold to, to, to move around the build plate to get a different view of it. And if you haven't noticed yet, this is the build plate of our 3D printer. So if we flip this around, this is actually the front of the build plate on how it's gonna look on our 3D printer. Well, in this case, I'm using a Bamboo Lab printer and we'll get to that on selecting your printers. So then what we do here is we essentially work in the prepare tab first and we just kind of work our way down, right? So in the prepare tab, the first thing we need to select is your printer. I'm choosing the Bamboo Lab P1S, but you can click on the scroll down here and all you have to do is click select or remove printers. And you can choose from the huge list of 3D printers on just selecting which one you're going to be using. And then it's also gonna ask you which size nozzle to add as well. Then you just click on confirm and add your 3D printer. Then the next selection over here is the plate, right? It says bed type. I'm using a textured PEI plate because that's what comes with them, but just select the correct plate. And then from there, what we need to do is choose our filaments. So I have four different types of filaments because this preloaded from the model file. So you'll, you'll know that when you download or upload a file or a model into the slicer, it's gonna have all these automatic settings and you can change this stuff. This is what the prepare tab is for. So what I wanna do is actually just I wanna print all of this in one color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start minusing or removing other filaments. See how I'm hitting this smaller sign? And you can add the plus sign, say if you wanted other filaments and just, it adds other filaments. But like I said, I only wanna do this in single color. And then on my single color, what I wanna do is I actually wanna select the filament that I'm gonna be using. And if you just click on the drop down, it'll show you a huge list of what you can do. And you can actually add other filaments as well by adding, by clicking on this little icon right here, it says click to edit. You can add pretty much any type of filament in this entire planet. What I'm gonna be doing here is just using Bamboo PLA Basic, or actually I'm just gonna choose generic PLA because I don't even know what brand it is. So we've selected the 3D printer, the bed type, or the plate, then we've chosen the filament. You can also select the color right here. I'm gonna do orange, because I think this would look cool in orange. Then if you move down here, this is where things get a little more complicated. If you're somewhat new to 3D printing and you're just kind of getting started with this, what I, I, what I highly advise you to do is keep a lot of this the way it is. Because these slicers are really good at what they do. One of the things you may want to look at though is the support tab. So if you click on supports here, 
Um, I don't know if you are aware of what supports are, but it's essentially little like tiers, like little pillars that hold up spots that have overhangs. So if I click on enable support here, and then there's two different types. We have tree and then normal. I always tend to use the tree. And again, if you're a beginner, I highly advise that you use the tree as well. It's kind of one of the most commonly used. And I tend not to touch any of the other settings with them just because I'm gonna let the, the slicer kind of do its thing. And if you're a total beginner, I advise you do that as well. I have more in-depth videos on how to like customize all of this stuff. So just check the channel if you need that. So now that we have all of this figured out now, what we're gonna do is actually click the preview tab. And when we click the preview tab here, what the slicer does is it uses its pow its secret powers to kind of like make it so that the it's gonna figure out how it wants to how it wants to 3D print the file. And a lot of times, if you listen to it, the slicer is gonna tell you if something's wrong and you gotta pay close attention. See right here down in the corner, it says there's an error. Variable layer height is not supported with, with organic supports. So maybe what I do is just turn off the supports and then click, go back to the prepare tab and then click preview to re-slice it again and just see how it works. And a lot of times, if you're having issues, it'll tell you you're having issues. And um, essentially what the prepare tab does is it gives us all the information that the 3D printer is going to be using to essentially print this file. So it kind of told us that we didn't need supports probably because this overhang is at enough of an angle to where the, the 3D printer can do this. So that's really cool that it kind of told us this. And um, if we try the other supports here, like if I click on support, actually you gotta go back to the prepare tab. Say if you're editing any of this, go back to the prepare tab, click enable supports, and then do the normal. I wanna see what it says then. I'm gonna go click on preview again to re-slice the file, and I'm gonna see if it allows it. It's probably gonna be a ginormous mess, or maybe it's gonna give me some alert telling me that it's not going to work. Um, you're also gonna notice that your um, your computer's gonna bog down when you go and slice it, just because you're, you're using a lot of CPU power. Okay, so this is all this crazy supports. That's obviously not gonna work and they're not gonna peel very well. So I'm gonna go back to the prepare tab, I'm gonna turn off supports, preview it, and I think this is going to work a lot better. And we can look at all of these settings over here. Like it tells you how much time on the inner walls, the outer walls, the overhang wall. Uh, most importantly though, over, if you look over here, it tells you how much total filament you're gonna be using. And then also the cost of it. Um, again, you're gonna have to give or take that. It's gonna be in the ballpark. And then it tells you the total amount of time it takes to 3D print it. Another real cool setting that I'll tend to look at is if I go over here with this tool here, this is the layer height tool. If you left click and drop and drag down here, it'll show you how the 3D printer is essentially going to 3D print all the stuff in the process. So if I, if I left click and hold, you can see that it's gonna print that piece first, then this piece, and then this piece last. And it doesn't need any supports, which is really cool. So that looks really good, right? So let's go back to the preview tab or the prepare tab, and I wanna show you guys some of the cool settings that we can be messing with in here, because that is like, it's super basic here. So if we, if we wanna customize anything, because these are the first things that are gonna come up, right? You wanna customize, uh, one of the most popular things people wanna change is the sizing. So if you left click and highlight each individual piece, and you can also hold control, say if you wanted to like, um, say if you wanted to highlight multiple items at the same time. For example, if I'm looking to change the sizing of these models, I have to highlight everything together, it makes more sense, and then just change the sizing, right? So that's the most that's the most widely used thing a lot of people use up here. And again, this navigation is kind of like kind of customizing things, right? So if we click on scale here, this is the sizing feature. What you can do is change the sizing by scale or you can actually change it by size of millimeters. And I highly advise that you keep it uniform because if you kind of if you change, you know, like the x coordinate of it, one one axis of it, it's not going to be uniform. So let's do the scaling by percentage feature. So if I do this and I shrink it by 50%, you can tell that it's a lot smaller now, obviously. Or if I wanna do it by 70%, it's even smaller, you know what I mean? And by the way, if you guys wanna undo anything at any time, there's an undo button over here up in the left-hand corner, so just click back. I'm going to do that. And then also, I mean, what you can do is kind of customize any of this stuff here. Using these buttons up here, these all these features on the this header, I guess you'd call it. So if I left click here, I can um, I can move it. Sometimes you'll have like a brim you gotta be careful of. And 
Um, what you can do is just kind of go through some of these settings. Like the, you can add a new plate. Say if you had multiple things of a new plate, we can click that and add a new plate. You can also right click and delete it, delete plate. And then what you can also do is auto orientate. So um, this will help auto orientate. Like it'll use the slicer's brain power to tell you how it should be orientated. So if I click on here and click on auto orientate, it's, it's already orientated how it should. Or what I can do here is I can move it. I can click on the move section and we can kind of move this around even though you can kind of left click. I can even bring this up and I can merge these two parts as one as well. Again, I go over a lot more of this stuff in the more in-depth tutorials on how to do this stuff. Also, what I can do is change the positioning. I can change lay on its face. Um, I can also, what's really cool is I can click here and I can add text. So if I wanted to like add text right here, my name's Chris. So I just add the text here. And if I zoom in here, it'll show me what this text is going to look like. And I can change these settings. A lot of times if I'm, if I'm 3D printing stuff and uh, you know putting some branding on it, it's actually really cool. Especially when I'm printing for kids, I'll put like little cool stuff in here and they absolutely love it. You can change the text. You can change essentially everything with it. You can turn it at an angle. I can do different stylings. Uh, this is where you're gonna learn kind of everything. See, I'm changing the angle of it here. Um, it's a really cool feature. So again, all of these buttons up here are gonna kind of like help you figure out how to do this stuff. Um, what you can do is figure out dimensions of things with this tool here. Just remember, you have to left click and highlight the item that you wanna work on and able to be doing these buttons. I can do the painting feature, whereas um, I can, uh, painting is essentially changing the filament colors of different sections, which is really cool. I can actually click on the the fuzzy the fuzzy skin. Say if I wanted to do like uh, like the smoothing of the surface and such like that. I can also um, clicking back here. What I can also do is click on this measurement feature, and I can get measurements of like different. Say if I wanted this measurement to this measurement, it'll tell you. This is really kind of helpful to know when you're trying to get a piece to fit inside something or just need it to, to fit uh, in any particular way. You can also do assembly stuff. Say if you wanted to like cut this up into multiple pieces pieces to assemble it. Um, all these features up here are essentially what you're going to be needing. And also what you can be doing is adding brims to help it stick a little bit more. But this is kind of, I wanna aim this at a total beginner just to kind of give you a gist of how to like do all of this, just to get like your hands like dirty a little bit with this. So I'm gonna zoom out here and I think I'm ready to 3D print this, right? Once you're at this process, all you have to do is click the preview tab once you're done customizing the model inside Orca Slicer. Again, guys, make sure to give this video a like. This is the only Orca Slicer tutorial that you're going to need. This is my basic tutorial for beginners on how to use Orca Slicer to 3D print. So now what we're gonna do here is we can actually click on print plate. There's a couple different ways to do this, right? Now that I've looked at everything in the preview tab, uh, I've double checked all my filaments. Um, if you have multiple types of filament, it's gonna be a little more complicated. You might have to go into this device tab and then connect to your 3D printer. Um, you can click on this plus button and what you can do is connect to it via your wireless network. Some people do that. Some people just prefer to kinda not do that. It kinda depends on how you wanna do it. You can connect to your camera to a lot of 3D printers. What I've been kind of tending to do sometimes is just saving the file on a flash drive um, and then just plugging it into the 3D printer. There's been a lot of controversy regarding like these 3D printers and like the slicers and getting into our networks and stuff like that. So what I've been doing is kind of trying to use as less networks as possible. I'm not trying to get you scared by any means, but all you do to do that feature is, you know, what you can do is just click on print plate and then you choose your printer here and then this is if you're going to be doing the network route, right? And then you choose your PLA and then you click send to the 3D printer, right? That is one route if you're okay doing it over the networks. Um, like I was saying, I've been tending to kind of just save the files and putting it on a flash drive. So what you do then to do that is you just click on this scroll down and then you just do um, export your G code or what you can do is um, export all sliced file and then what you can do is kind of just save it. What it does is it save it. See, export sliced file, and then it'll save it, and then it'll be a .3MF file, and then what you can do is just throw that on a flash drive and then just plug this into your 3D printer, and then just select it. That's how 3D printing was back in the day. And um, there's just been some weird things happening with networks. 
Um, chances are, if you have a Bamboo Lab 3D printer, you're probably using Bamboo Studio anyways, but if you're using other types, you know, what you can also do is connect them via Ethernet cord too. That's a little safer than getting on Wi-Fi. But yeah, guys, this is my full Orca Slicer tutorial. This is the only Orca Slicer tutorial that you're going to need for beginners. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how to get you 3D printing your models through Orca Slicer. Please consider giving this video a like or hit me up in the comments down below. Um, I'm kind of just getting a lot of these slicers out of the door as far as like helping beginners. I get tons and tons of questions. The channel now is getting over half a million views and just helping people solve problems. And that's kind of what my aim is here. So there's a bunch of new 3D printer reviews coming out soon. Um, I just really a 3D printing dork when it comes to this stuff. So please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, later.